Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video and in this video I'm going to be trying to fix a Nintendo Switch light. I've never tried to do a light before. I have taken apart my own light, I did a reassembly video but uh, I've never tried to fix one so I think this one should be interesting. Now, I only won this the other day, it was posted straight away and it's arrived today so I'm going to show you the listing before I'm packing it because unfortunately with the coronavirus and stuff I want to give it a quick wipe down just in case there is anything living on the box or on the surface of the Nintendo Switch. I dislike doing USB-C ports on the Nintendo Switch. I've attempted it, I think, twice now. And I think I've been successful... Uh, actually, I think I've done three of them, but I had to do the first one twice because the first time I wasn't successful, but then the second time I was. But it is a horrible job to do because there's hidden pins, because it's USB-C, so it's reversible. So you can see one lot of pins, just like you can, for example, on a HDMI port or a normal USB port, but then there's a hidden row of pins underneath the port, so you're relying purely on heat to have hopefully melted the solder in order to make it stick. Now, I do not know if the Nintendo Switch Lite has the same USB port as the Nintendo Switch. So this is what my thinking is before even looking at it. On the proper Nintendo Switch you have to be able to dock it. So that USB-C port, loads of those pins are going to be in use because you have to be able to charge it and dock it. So you're going to have data signals whizzing along to allow it, you know, like a HDMI cable in a, in a way, but on the Nintendo Switch Lite it doesn't dock. So the only thing you need a USB port is to charge it and if you wanted to connect up an accessory to it, for example, if you wanted to have a wired Pro Controller, then that's going to be using, obviously, more pins than just the charging pins. But realistically now, you can connect up a Pro Controller via wireless. So do you actually need to have every single pin on that USB port working? As far as I'm concerned, you just need to have the charging one's working and all the rest can be done away with and it can still be a working switch. Yes, it's not ideal and it's not perfect, but at this moment in time, this switch isn't working whatsoever. Now, I don't even know if you can buy. I had a quick look. I put in USB-C Nintendo Switch Lite ports, replacement ports, and nothing came up. So remember, this is a very new system. They might not even be out yet for it, just like the Nintendo Switch. It took you know half a year to a year until spares started to come through for it. So this is what I'm thinking in this video before even unpacking it. I'm thinking of trying to rearrange the pins at the bottom or see what pins are suit uh, see what pins are working for the charging and then forget about all those other pins. They might be shortened against each other. Remove them out of the way and just have the charging pins. If that's possible, they might be snapped off. In which case then, there's a chance I think I may be able to get this to work by possibly just getting a tweezer and moving around things in a USB port, which I think, although the proper fix-it people out there won't like that because I haven't replaced the port, I think that would be quite a realistic fault to fix because numerous people are going to have kids, or not kids, adults as well, shoving things in there, maybe the incorrect lead or something, and then the pins might get damaged, or you might throw it in your rucksack and something might have jammed up into the port, in which case then, is it possible to get a Nintendo Switch Lite working by just rearranging the pins? I appreciate this isn't for a normal Nintendo Switch because for that you're going to want to have it able to be docked as well. So uh, yeah, that's the reason why I bought this one. Now already I can smell the smoke. So it says no power, LCD, oh okay, LCD and ports, mm, I hope that doesn't mean it's a faulty LCD now as well, it didn't say that in the listing. LCD X and port X. Well, okay. Let's not worry about that. Maybe that just means there is no LCD when you turn it on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this a clean, get rid of this box here, and then we'll uh, zoom right in and we'll see what's happening. I can see that there is a, a crack. Is there a crack here? There's some sort of mark here. I don't know if that's a crack going down here. Anyway, let's give this thing a clean up. Nothing in the SD card slot. Let's see if there's anything in the game reader. No. I'm a big fan of the Nintendo Switch Lite. I, uh, I just love them. I love the colours. I love the size of it. I love the feeling of it. It feels much more, to me, it feels a lot more solid than the Nintendo Switch itself. 
nice and clean now, so let's verify the fault by just tapping the power button. Let's see if anything happens. Right, so it's not coming up with anything there. I'm going to hold it down. Hold down for a good 10 seconds or so. Right, so still nothing's happening, so it's completely uh, completely dead and I can't hear anything. Just put the volume up. No, so it does look like there's no power whatsoever. Right, so let's zoom right in and have, I can already see pins loose in here. Let's zoom right in and see what it looks like in here. Right, so there you go, you can see that uh, top side there, there's the crack. Top side looks okay, but there's definitely problems with the pins on that side there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at my Nintendo Switch Lite just to see if all the pins are actually in place. You know, top and bottom. Because again, if I only get one side working, is it such a hardship? It just means you can only charge it one way round. So for example, you'll only be able to plug the lead in this way and not this way. Again, I still think the Switch will have a value. I know it's not as good as a working Switch, but you know, even if I was to sell this one on, if you're honest with what the problem is, I think a lot of people would be happy with that. Well, let me get a torch. Right, so I've got the torch signing in there now. And look, you can see that they're all lifted. I'm talking about the ones here in the middle, and also that edge and that edge. Look, the ones on the top, so hard to see. Right, here we go, here we go. Well, look at that, the ones on the top, it keeps losing focus, hold on. The ones on the top seem to be okay. So in theory, if you were to snap off all the bottom ones, you could just use the plugs one way round and they would work. But, it looks like there's uh, 12 on each side. I'm wondering whether I'd be able to bend them back into place. I think it's worth a try. So I think what I'm going to do is... I'm going to use my microscope on this one. I've uh, had a look through here. This is what a good one should look like. This is my yellow one. Can you see now all the pins are actually there? But even these ones look slightly lifted, and this has had very little use. And uh, definitely haven't plugged anything in here, which shouldn't be. So you can see that they are, they must be slightly chamfered down at the front. So when you plug in the plug, it pushes them down into place. It doesn't look like they're kind of glued onto the edge. So that's them there. But you can see that they're all there, they're all flat. Do you know what? Right now I do actually have my hopes up a little bit on this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it up so I'm comfortable. I'll get the camera set up but you're not really gonna you're not really gonna see much because it's so fiddly. And I think I'm actually gonna use my proper microscope with some very fine tweezers and see if there's any way that I might be able to bend these pins back into the place or if some of them snap off that doesn't really bother me so much the thing is at the moment you can't I'm not going to plug something into it but I wouldn't be able to plug that into it because it's just going to foul the pins are going to stop this from being fully pushed in so if a few of them snap off as long as they're flush clean then I'm thinking that I can just plug it in one way round if it doesn't work, plug it in the other way, and it should work because the pins at the top are intact. So, uh, yeah, let's get set up. Well, so I've got my microscope here. Now, because the Nintendo Switch is quite high up, I've had to put it on a Mr. Men book box. But, uh, yeah, you can see what I've done here. A couple of dumbbells just to hold it upright. So I'm just going to talk you through what I see. So this pin on the very edge here is completely and utterly bent over. The next one is just pushed to the side. That one looks okay. Then the one, two, three, the fourth along is completely bent back, like fully bent back. Fifth along is fully bent back. Sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh for okay. And the twelfth is fully bent back again. So uh, it's going to be very hard for you actually to see what's going on. But let's give it a go. I suppose really I'm just probably going to be fast forwarding through it because I don't know how long it's going to take. So let's just start by moving over number two. Right, okay, happy with number two. I think I'm going to go on to number four. I've got a feeling these are just going to snap as I pull them back.
just trying to go either side to, to have as the, the least amount of stress possible on the metal. Ah, it's gone. Okay, so that pin is now gone. But as I said, that may not necessarily affect us. I'll take it out at the very end. Right, and that pin has now gone as well. Okay, so both those pins have gone. So this isn't looking very hopeful. Let's try and do the edge one here. I suppose when they've been bent, it's too hard to get them back to normal again. I'm a bit confused why this one seems so long. Maybe it's the ground ones at the end are longer, possibly. So maybe this is going to be the most important one. Gonna get some other tweezers that are, that haven't got any bends on them. Just gonna use this screwdriver just to steady the kind of plastic moulding. I'm gonna get some thicker tweezers because I need to grab that to actually turn it around a little bit. Well, I think I have managed to do that ends one and that might be the important one because maybe the end ones are the, uh, the ground. So you know like the negative when it comes to the charging. Right, so one looks okay, two, three, four and five are broken. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So now we've got to do this N one here. Right, okay, so out of four of them, three of them snapped. But the one I'm most pleased about is that end one there because I'm wondering if that is the ground or not. So I'm just going to get my meter because the very one on the right hand side, if that was the ground, then maybe, maybe then it might, uh, it might be okay. So let's just have a little look just on continuity. So I'm just going to go against the outer bit. Yes, it is. Excellent, let's see if the one on the other side is. So it looks like the two on the outside are ground. Let's go into ones that I snapped off. Oh, I can't tell because they're uh, it's short and against. But that one on the outside is definitely ground. So now, I think let's zoom out, let's get rid of the microscope, and let's see if when we plug something in, something happens or not. All right, here we go. So I've got my uh, charger here. Let's just plug it in via this, see if it's drawing anything. Right, here goes. So I'll try this way to begin with. It's gone in all right. Right, but that's not doing anything. Uh, it's not drawing anything. I thought that that might, uh, I thought that might have done something. Right, let's plug it in the other way. Let's see if it does anything this way around. Ready? Uh, now, why is that? Surely it should do it one way or the other. It doesn't make any sense. If 
the battery was completely depleted, it should still be taking some sort of charge now, shouldn't it? Why is that? If the top row of pins are fine, and there's definitely nothing shorting on the bottom pins, how does this know that those pins are not there? It doesn't. That doesn't make any sense. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the proper charger because this is a lead just for the Pro Controller. But then again, this should be wired up both ways. And normally this does accept the charge as well because as far as I know, this has got all pins connected. Uh, I really thought that was going to do it. And look, even when I wiggle it, it's still not doing anything. It's definitely plugging in nice and easy. Right, let me get the proper Nintendo Switch charger. Right, so I've got the proper charger here, but before I do that, let's plug it into my one, which is definitely a working one. Let's see what it does. Yeah, you see? Now that will go to uh, zero and then turn on. So it should definitely charge via this. Mm. Makes me wonder now if there's more wrong with this than, uh, than the USB. Alright, so this is a proper Nintendo Switch charger. Alright, nothing that way. Nothing that way. I've just felt up here now. It feels like the screen's loose. Do you know what? Rather than waiting for ages, remember when you buy off eBay, you've always got to be very, very, very wary, especially when it comes to new products, not old products, products that are not worth anything. You haven't got to be wary at all, but anything that's worth money, remember this could have been looked at by many people. I'm not saying it has been, I'm not saying that at all, but let's say if it was water damaged on the inside, somebody could have on purpose got the pins, messed them up here to sell it as a USB problem. I'm not saying it was the seller, it could have been somebody three or four down the line. And again, I'm not saying that at all, but these things do cross my mind because I've been burnt many, many, many times, as you all and as you all know, on eBay. But that might not be it. Maybe this is just a case where the battery is completely flat. So I'm hoping that with this one here, it is still just a USB problem. Because if it is, in theory, I can't see why that wouldn't be working right now. I'm worried that it says LCD-X as well, so why would uh, maybe somebody already put a different battery in this and the LCD wasn't displaying? And now that would upset me and I'll tell you why. I've bought another two Nintendo Switch lights that are working but they're not displaying on the screen. So I wouldn't want to have three with the same fault because uh, then it means it's not as interesting for the videos and stuff if everything I've got just has the same fault. It's lovely and clean. Whew, I was worried it was going to be water damage there for a minute. Right, yes, I'm really, really, really happy with that. That looks absolutely perfect. Hold on a minute, what's supposed to be here? Why is there an empty ribbon cable slot here? That's what a power button. What is supposed to be in there? I can't remember now when I strip my one down what that's supposed to be. Right, well that's not... That's not good. Let's have a think about this a minute. Unless it is just empty. Actually, it does feel warm. It feels warm here. Yeah, it does feel warm. Looks perfect, and that's the water damage thing, so that's good that it hasn't been water damaged. Oh, hold on a minute. It's missing here as well. Do you know what? This is the backlight in the LCD, surely. Surely nobody's stolen the LCD out of it. Surely somebody wouldn't have sold something and had the LCD out of it. 
Hmm, this is not looking good. And this is loose here. I wonder if the LCD is missing. Hmm, right, the LCD is here, but none of it's connected. Look, what is going on here? Look at that there, that's not connected. And the backlight's not connected, so that is for the backlight there. What is it going on? So somebody's been definitely sneaky along the line somewhere, haven't they? I wonder whether they've had another one for cracked LCD and they've uh, just swapped them over. I mean, why wouldn't you connect it all up again when you've gone to the bother of connecting up absolutely everything else? Hmm. Right, okay. So I'll have to strip it down. I'll have to strip every part of this down now. Nothing is ever as it seems, is it, when you buy off eBay? Or am I just unbelievably lucky? Because, looking at other people, they seem to buy things and just have one thing wrong. Saying that does make for a more interesting video, doesn't it? If I just bent the pins out of the way and it worked, then it wouldn't be so, uh, you know, it could be boring. So maybe on a video like this, it might make more money in views than uh, than if I just unbent the pins. The problem is, shorter videos get more views. So if I just had one that I bent the pins, that might have been a 20 minute video and people would be like, yes, I can fix that myself now. But now, if there's other things wrong, it might turn into an hour and a half video, and apart from my subscribers, nobody's going to watch it. And then that video's not going to make any, you know, not really going to make any money. Still, it is more interesting to fix. I knew there was a, I knew they wouldn't put a ribbon cable connector on there if there wasn't a ribbon cable in it. That it was getting warm here. Maybe it was. Uh, maybe it was turned on. Do you know what I should have done? I should have seen if the fan was spinning and stuff. Right, I'm on the uh, volts DC. Three point eight volts. So the battery is full. The battery itself is okay. <laughs> Now, uh, should I quickly put it back together, see if that fan's spinning? Or, well, do you know what? Look, I have to take it apart anyway for, I have to take it apart to get the LCD in. Even if the LCD is faulty, I still need to take it apart to get it in to uh, find out if it's faulty or not. So I might as well just leave the, the reveal of whether it's going to work or not till the very end. Is the board out the board itself does look good definitely does look good right so now it will allow me to put the front on and uh, you bring it round so we've got the two cables here for the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi see I haven't I have taken this apart before for my reassembly video and also I messed around with putting a, a rumble pack in here for because this doesn't have rumble so I put rumble in place of one of the speakers that was on another video, but I haven't really got much experience with studying this to see what goes where, you know. But I'm, honestly, I'm so happy that it's not water damaged. That that means so much to me. So even though there's something suspicious going on here, I'm uh, I'm still relieved that it's not water damaged. So that needs to go through here, and then the other sides need to go through there. Oh, hold on, one second. Is this all ready to come out now? Well, I might as well make it easy for myself and just take the whole thing out. Do you 
know now I've got this out I am going to get a USB-C port to see if uh, a Nintendo Switch one to see if they're the same or not because that would be interesting to know I've got three in here these are the Nintendo Switch ones so let's have a look now see if they look the same or not so we have what do we have here Two there, one there, the pin's up there, right, so that looks that looks the same, but, oh, I see where it's different. This is cut shorter. Can you see, you've got the kind of shield and you've got the USB port just underneath. You can see little welds here. Look at the welds on here. So basically this is going to stick down further if you were to put a Nintendo Switch one on the light, but it should work because look all the mounting holes are in the same place but it definitely would stick out further so you know at the bottom here do you know what I think you get away with it because look you can see a bit of plastic anyway so all that would happen is the metal will go to the very very edge I think you would get away with that yeah they all stick out the same amount I'm going to make sure I put it in the right way otherwise everything is going to be upside down so if I can get this working what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put heat on here with a hairdryer, that will melt the adhesive and then it should push it all back into place. Well, that's that, so now I can start putting this back together. Here we go. I am very, very, very apprehensive. I don't know what's going to happen now. So here we go. Turn it on there. Excellent, but not excellent. The screen smashed. Right, okay. It's working, but the screen is smashed. Right, it says unable to restart the console. Hold a power button for 12 seconds to turn the console off. So let's do that. I wonder if there's any other issues with it. Unable to restart the console. Hold the power button for 12 seconds to turn the console off. No. Would the screen stop it from booting? Another classic eBay buy, isn't it? If I can get the screen that has all the games and stuff on here, then I would buy a screen for it. It's just that, uh, as far as I know, the screens are up on £50, I think. Right, okay, so that's 12 seconds. Let's see if it boots up now. Yes, this is... No. Unable to restart the console. Hold power button for 12 seconds to turn console off. So, could it be the smash screen that's causing that to happen? Let's plug it in. Thing is though, let's let's just think about this a minute. I right, I know I might be being cynical, but the USB definitely had dodgy pins, yeah. So what's the likelihood in normal use that you would smash the screen and at the same time decide to jam up? That because you couldn't charge this, so you would have had to. Right. Well, unless this happens. You messed up the charging thing and you got so annoyed that you punched it and then it broke the screen. What other circumstances would lead the screen to be smashed and the USB ports to be damaged? Right now obviously I don't want to go out and spend £50 on a screen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the screen out of my one, put it in here, then see if it boots up. Maybe it's not booting up because it's recognising that there's a problem with the screen. Seems a bit weird but it could be causing some sort of short or something. I don't know, it might be possible, or maybe there is some other problem with this thing and when the pin shorted here it damaged the chip on the inside, in which case then you need to think is it worth spending £50 on the screen and X amount on a chip when the USB port is still faulty. So uh, yeah, not so sure. Right, so it's going to take quite a while, I'm just going to quickly do this now, fast forward through the whole lot, but I am going to uh, risk breaking my one to fix this one here.
try to put the motherboard from here into here now. So I'm going to be using my battery, my fan, my screen and the analog sticks and stuff, but I can't see any of that actually affecting it. So if this works here, I'm pretty sure it will be just a problem with the screen. See what happens. Well, it's not doing anything at all. That's plugged in, the power's plugged in. No, the battery's 95% full, don't we? Oh. oh, what have I forgot to plug in? Digitizers in. Plugged everything in, I'm sure of it. What on earth is going on? Also think about it, even if the screen was broken, it should still charge, shouldn't it? And this actually, sometimes they can, yeah, sometimes I've had it where there's been a short on the actual ribbon connector. What is going on with this one? So we've got a screen when we put it on a broken screen, it comes out with Nintendo, but for some reason when we put it on a good screen, it's not coming up with anything. I am completely confused and it's not showing that it's charging either. I'm completely and utterly confused. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my good board into this broken screen just to see if it does get past that boot up and then that will suggest whether it's a problem with the... because on this one I'm thinking did it not boot up properly because it was a broken screen. Try this one now. So this is the good board in the 40 screen. There's loads of things missing from it, like the speakers and the heat pipe and stuff, but it should still turn on. So let's see what happens now. There we go, that's turning on. Let's see if it gets past that or whether it throws up an error. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, so let's recap now. So the one I bought off eBay has a 40 USB port, it's got a smash screen, and the motherboard doesn't work. You know what I'm thinking? I wonder whether it's just been put together from faulty Nintendo Switch lights. I find it hard to believe that a console that was released at the end of last year would have so many faults wrong with it. Right, okay, uh, so now I've got a fault on the motherboard, the USB port doesn't work and the screen is cracked. I know that the screens are around £50. Good news is the battery appears to be okay because I can see it says 45% here. Let's just see if I plug in a charger whether, remember this is a good motherboard, but let's just see if the battery is shown as charging. Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay, so the battery is good, that's uh, 
that's one good thing. I mean, look, you know, it could. This could be all genuine. I'm not saying it's not. It's just a bit, a bit dodgy when you see a switch that's already been taken apart and they haven't even bothered put the screen back. Makes me think that it was a fault on the USB port and they got the screen to fix up another one. That's what I'm thinking and put the screen on that and then sold it on. I'm not saying it's the one that I bought it from. It could be the one before that or even the one before that. How many hands has this gone through? But now I've got a fault on a motherboard. I mean, right now it's not even turning on, which is really weird because earlier on it was turning on. Let's just try it again. Charged. It's never charged. It's weird though that I've got a different fault than I did before. That's the thing that's confusing me because I haven't done anything to the board. I mean, the only thing I'm thinking of is you know when you're disconnecting things without pulling out the battery. Because I did disconnect this side here before pulling out the battery, but I think that would be unlikely to uh, to cause it. Well, no matter what you have to do, you have to. Well, do you have to? I mean, really, you kind of have to undo this one here before pulling out the battery, unless you were to reach behind it and pull it out. Is that possible? Yeah, OK. Well, that's handy to know. So you can actually pull the battery out first before doing anything else. No, I don't know what to do with this one. I don't know whether to take it any further or not. If it was still lighting up here, then I'd be tempted. But the very fact it's not doing anything here at all is uh, it's got me worried now. But the only thing that's making me has got my intrigue is the fact that what have I done to this to make it was working to begin with? Although it wasn't turning on, it was still coming up to the Nintendo thing. Now it's not doing anything at all. It's completely and utterly dead. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back into this one here because that's when the original fault happens was when I put it into there just to see somehow is it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's no way is the screen going to be married to the board. But I'm just wondering. I, the only thing I've done different is put it into put the faulty motherboard into a good switch. Now it's not displaying anything. So I will swap it back into this one just to see what's uh, what's happening. I'll do that off camera now, and uh, I'll have a little nosy around, and then I'll make my mind up whether I'm going to take this any further or not. Right, what is going on here? So what I've done is I've put the faulty motherboard back into the faulty screen, and look, we have something again. Not working, but we've got something just like we had before. Why on earth, when I put that motherboard into a different screen, is it not working? Well, what I'm going to have to do is put together my good one. I'm worried now that maybe I've blown the backlight or something on my good screen because I undone the connectors without undoing the battery. Oh, right, okay, so let's put my good switch back together and see what's happening. Right. This is my good switch. Oh, there's no screen on it. I think I've blown the backlight or blown something on the backlight circuit. All right, let's disconnect the backlight and put it back in again just in case it is a bad connection. This is a risk you take when you take apart uh, something that's working. What a nightmare. So I can't even dock it because it's a switch light. So this now is completely and utterly useless. So I need to find out now. Is it to do with the... Well, we know it's... Hold on one second now. We know it's not the screen, don't we? Because, sorry, we know it is the screen because when I put that board in another one, the only thing I'm thinking of is the backlight is over here. And I didn't swap this, so there's a chance that it could be this board that's faulty. But I think it would be unlikely. But what I do is I swap that board over, and then we know whether the backlight not working is to do with this board or whether it's to do with the main board. This is actually going to help me because I've bought another two Nintendo Switches on eBay that have this exact same problem. Gutted is an understatement, <laughs> right, 
Let's swap that board over. I'm hoping it's on that little board at the side because it'd be easier to fault find than the whole big board. Okay, so I'll swap the board out into the old one here and it's not working. So 100% now, it means that I have actually blown the backlight on the actual screen itself, which is uh, really bad news because that's a 50 pound item to replace. Good news is, is that it is fixable. It's just that right now I don't want to fork out another, I've spent quite a bit of money on these uh, switch lights so I, I can't fork out another. It'd be different, I could fork it out for a, for this one to get it working, but I, I, you know, £50 for this, £50 for that, that's another £100. Oh, I'm really disappointed. It's my own fault though. So I'm wondering now, especially now that there's two for sale on eBay that I've bought, I wonder is this going to be a bit of a common problem with these screens because I never really heard about that problem on the old Switch. I wonder if these screens are more susceptible to it. Right, so that's uh, back together there. Let's plug the battery in. And now uh, we should find that this still isn't working. In fact, let me just put uh, a speaker in so we can hear it. I wonder if there's any way I could look at the backlight on the actual screen. Oh yes, it's back. What? What's going on? What is? Oh, honestly, what? Um, <laughs> I'm so confused, but, but I'm so relieved. Right, oh, you don't know how relieved I am. Whew, wow. Okay, so now, what does that... What does that prove? Does that prove that there might be an issue with this board here then? So now I need to swap this board again back into here to see if it stops working. Or is it just something to do with the connections on the cables? But, I don't know, they seem to be... Uh, seem to be okay I'm getting do you know what it is I'm getting uh, I'm starting to get all confused now about what's what what comes from where and stuff like that but I am going to swap those side ones over again just to see and if it's still working then I know the side ones are nothing to do with it again it's useful to know if the side ones are somehow married to the board I think it's highly unlikely but again I don't actually know that so uh, let's swap them over but luckily luckily it looks like I haven't damaged the backlight Okay, I'm just going to take a break for a bit and then I'll come back to this. Right, good news, there's nothing to do with that board. So all I can think is that one of the ribbon cables mustn't have been seated correctly. I'm wondering if it was the one here. I mean, I've done quite a few ribbon cables in my life now and I was pretty sure they were seated correctly, but maybe they were just slightly off because the backlight is going to go, be going through this board to go through to here, to get into here, isn't it, via this is like the link cable. So I'm quite hopeful now that on the two that I bought from eBay, if they have been, you know, like messed around with, then they might have put them back together, just like me at the beginning, and had absolutely nothing, even when wiggling cables and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that's quite interesting. But anyway, so basically, it looks like I'm still going to have, at the end of this, a working Nintendo Switch. So let's turn this one off. What I have to do now is I have to fault find the... Uh, the motherboard on the one I got from eBay and actually see if I can find maybe 40 capacitors or something like that because remember it's not it's not it's not going past that initial screen there so yes it definitely needs a new screen but unless I can get the motherboard fixed there's no point even getting a screen so let's take the motherboard out and I'm going to go across the capacitors and stuff around the chips just to see if I can find something that's testing faulty Right, so I've got the faulty board out now, so let's go across a few of the chips, just like we would do with a normal Nintendo Switch, and see what's wrong with it. So, I've had just a very quick scan around the place, and it looks like this is the sort of charge chip, you know, the one that often fails when uh, you put a wrong power supply into uh, a standard Nintendo Switch. So let's start off there and see what's happening. So let's zoom in. Right, so I reckon this is the main fuse, because look, it goes to a block here, and then across to here. So let's see if this is okay. Yeah, that's okay there. 
So now let's just go across a few of the capacitors and check for shorts. So I'm just using one of my leads to uh, the ground down here. So we're looking for it to short on one side, but not the other. If it's short on both sides, then that might indicate a problem with the chip. All right, that looks okay. Some of these just might be in line, so they might not be going to ground. That one's okay. That's okay. Right, that one's not okay. And again, that's that charge chip. And that one's not okay. Oh, hold on, is it? No, it's not. I'm on the capacitor there. Short in there and short in there. That's okay, right, so we've got, they're just resistors, aren't they? So it could either be the two capacitors or more than likely it's gonna be the charge chip. So let's make a note of that number there and let's see if that's the same as the one on the actual Nintendo Switch. So we're talking about M92T36. Right, let me get some of my spare chips. M92T36, fantastic. Right, so what I'm gonna do is, now this chip here is off the uh, the job lot of Nintendo Switches that I got from the Netherlands. So basically, I'm not sure if this chip is actually going to be a working chip or not. Just want to see if there's chips in that corner. No, I think that's okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap that over and see if that gets rid of the problem. Remember, if I can get this board to work, then of course I will definitely buy a screen because the Nintendo Switch Lite is a current console and I would easily, if I was able to sell it, get my money back. But it's not that. I just want to have it working. So, uh, yeah, I would be willing to spend the £50 to, to, uh, to get this 41 working because even then... It means the total cost of this would be about £130. So yeah, uh, you know anybody with a brain cell would obviously just pay a little bit more and get a complete new one with a power supply. But remember, when I got this one, I didn't dream that it would have a cracked screen, a faulty motherboard and a faulty USB port. So uh, I've been sort of done over on this one. So uh, yeah, let me. I'm going to clean up this chip here to get rid of all the old dry flux from it. I'm going to use some flux here. Heat this up, take it off, pop this one on, and we'll see if that fixes the problem. If not, I'm going to put a different chip on it because this chip itself might be faulty. All right, here we go. Let's put some flux around it. Now I've got my airflow set to. What should I set my airflow to? See, this is a multi-layer board. I'm going to set my airflow to 5 out of 8. And I've got my temperature set to 480 degrees Celsius. Alright, let's see how easy this thing comes off. There we go. That came off nice and easy. Now I've cleaned up the next chip. So I'm gonna put it straight on now while the board's still warm. Let me just put a tiny bit more flux on there. I'm not gonna clean up the pads and put leaded solder or anything. I'm hoping that between this and, remember the chip that I've taken off is from a board so it will already have bits of solder on there. Hoping it will be okay. Now I'm putting on this way round because this is the way 
that it came off and if you ever forget you can see that there's a little dot on here and you can see on the board there's a little arrow here so uh, if you forget at least you'll know that way right so let's just roughly get it into position but hopefully surface tension will pull it in right I think that will do let's heat it up again same temperature and we're wanting the solder to go shiny and then we'll give it a little tap and hopefully then it'll be dancing on the surface we might even see it pull in a little bit because it's a little bit over that way Right, okay, so it moved there. It moved the wrong way. <laughs> there we go. Did you see that dance there? So let's give it a tiny little tap. There you go. Okay. I only did that bit for the camera, I should have just left it as it is. Right, so I'm going to let that cool down, then I'm going to clean it with IPA, and then what we'll do is put it roughly back together, and let's see this time if it's drawing a charge, then if it is, maybe then it will actually boot up. Again, so I'm just using some IPA to clean it up. Okay, so you can see now that that looks like it's nice and central. None of them look bridged. So now let's get the multimeter and let's see if these capacitors are still short in here. Nope. No. Nope. Excellent. I'll just check the others because you know I don't know about this. Uh, this chip might be faulty. Excellent, well looking at that it seems to be okay. So these two shorts have definitely gone now. As you can see it's not short in here anymore. So it's short in the side of the chip. So what's happened is ground's going into the chip and then somewhere it's shortened together which is pushing the ground to here and here when it shouldn't be pushing the ground to here and here. So these two here are always ground but these two aren't. But something's joined together. So let's now pretend that this pin here is the ground pin. In fact which is the ground pin on this? Here, okay, right. So, do you see here that shouldn't be going to here and here? But let's say if this pin was shorted in here to these two contact, then it's going to push the ground through onto these two. So, this side here is always ground, but these two shouldn't be. Well, I'm quite hopeful now. So, let's zoom out, let's pop it back in, and let's see what's going to happen with this. So that's the good thing about it. even when you get 40 things you can reuse parts of them because that chip would normally cost around £10. Well now I don't have to pay that because I've already bought a job lot off broken Nintendo Switches. So bit by bit I will kind of make, even though that was a complete waste of money, I will make the money back on that eventually. so it's back together just enough to test it and let's see now if it will get past that initial error code what oh, I need to put the battery in come on now come on fingers crossed this time this time do it come on come on come on come on Looking good, looking good. Yes, 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 yes. Brilliant. Little friends, Pokemon, fantastic. Yes, oh, I'm so happy with that. God, this has been a real mixed roller coaster of, of emotions for me. Right, let's see now. 
uh, if it's going to charge this time. Come on, do something, do something, do something. Yes, it's charging. Brilliant. 1.8. 1.8, and if you have a look here, we've got the little charge symbol just at the top corner. Brilliant, right, okay, now let's spin this round and see if it's charging this way. No, fine, so it doesn't show, it only charges one way, but I don't think that's much of a hardship. Let's just try that with the proper, uh, let me try that now, with the proper Nintendo Switch charger, see if that's the same. Right, so I'm just have a look at this charge light up here. The charger symbol. Right, so charge us that way round. Now I'm going to swap it round the other way. And it doesn't charge that way, so it only charges one way. Right, I'm uh, I'm fine with that. So now let's get the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Let's just get this charging again. There we go, yeah, 1.8, fantastic. Well, I'm gonna get the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and see if it syncs up via, uh, via this. If it does, we know then that the data pins are okay, in which case then the only hardship is you can only charge it one way round, which again, I don't really think that is a massive hardship. Take that out off here, and now let's put the USB thingy. Actually take that out of there. USB-C dongle on the go cable. Let's see. So let's see which way around it's going to work. So that's the. There's no demarcation. We've just got to see what happens. Right. So let's plug that in and let's see if it syncs up. Excellent. That synced up there. Well, it made a noise. Ah. So look, it's charging, but it didn't actually connect. So it means the data pins are not connected. So let's leave that there. Let's now try to swap it the other way. See if it connects the other way. There, so it connected that way. Excellent. And is that charging? But now it's not charging. So now, so, so <laughs> the pins work one side. But that's weird, it should work both sides, shouldn't it? Let's swap this one round. Hold on, mind you, would it be able to charge from here anyway? Would you plug it into there to charge? Hmm, I'm not sure about that now, because obviously normally you would plug this into your Nintendo Switch dock. I've never actually tried to charge it from the Nintendo Switch. Anyway, look, it's synced up, so that means that's going to work. So now, the only other thing I can see that you would use it for, which is probably, probably wouldn't, because remember, you wouldn't have this in docked mode. Let's see if this little thing works here. So let's go to System Settings. And I'm going to go down to uh, controllers and sensors, and I'm going to turn pro wired communication on. Now let's see if this thing will sync up. One of these little dongles here. No, right. So that's not going to sync up. Let's turn it around the other way. Right. So it's got powered out now. So I wonder now if I get my Xbox controller, would that work on here or not? Excellent. So really now, apart from the fact that you have to swap it round, that's the only hardship you've got. Everything that you would want to do will still work via the USB port. So in this instance, I know it would be best to replace it, but I don't feel confident replacing that. As I say, I've done it in the past, but it's not something I feel comfortable with. So I think on this one, I'm just gonna get myself a screen and then this one will be a working switch. So uh, yeah, also I'll just let me just double check see if a game is gonna work. Right, let's pop a game in here. Got to be careful because I haven't got the heat pipe or anything in. Yeah, there you go. You recognise it. Street Fighter. Download, start software. Right. I think this is going to be a perfectly fine Nintendo Switch Lite. Let me find out how much these screens cost. Right, while I'm waiting for my laptop to turn on, I just want to start the game and you can see now the fan is spinning. Yeah. There you go.
these other games here are card games, so they're not on the uh, they're not on the system storage, so you can't actually play them. Oh wow, they're super expensive. I actually didn't think they were quite that much. So there we have it. What a roller coaster of emotions that was. But the main thing is is that I got my Nintendo Switch Lite working again because I thought at one stage I'd ruined it. It's quite stressful, but you know what? Overall, I really enjoyed this video because it had a little bit of everything. It had quite a bit of suspense. It had a bit of microscope work for the USB pins. It had a bit of soldering work with the chip here, and it had the not knowing what was wrong with the screen and stuff. It kind of had everything. I just hope now I'll be able to edit it down into something that is watchable because for me, this is like the ideal video, but I'm just not sure if I'm going to be ed able to edit it up to a time limit that makes it watchable without losing everything that actually happened in this because I've been on this for quite a few hours. So, uh, yeah, that is it. Am I going to buy a new screen? Not just yet. I'm going to wait until the other two Nintendo Switch lights come through that I bought from eBay as faulty. And if, for example, one has a bent board or water damaged or something, the screen might well be working, in which case I put it in here and I've saved myself £60. If by some miracle I get those other two working or if both the screens are completely gone, then of course I will spend the £60. Every week that goes by, the screens will probably come down in price. So I'm not kind of, you know, this is not exactly as if... Uh, it's a limited supply. If anything, that as time goes on, it will get cheaper because I'm pretty sure a Nintendo Switch screen is not as expensive as £60. So I think as more and more fail, they'll work their way onto eBay and I'm pretty sure in a year's time you'll be able to get a screen for £25-£30. So just to finish off the video, what I've done is I've put the screen from my Switch back onto the faulty one here. And you can see now it's working absolutely perfectly. These are the games that were on it originally, and these are two games that I've put on it. Connected this to Wi-Fi, it connects up fine. These two updated, motion controls work, headphone jack works, card thing works here. Haven't tried the SD yet, I presume that's gonna work. As far as I can see, it's all working absolutely fine. And you can see that the screen brightness. So everything's working good, it looks nice and clean, and I think anybody would be happy with that. It charges up to when I had it all together with the other one, that battery there charged up to 100%, no problem at all. So I think the problem I had earlier was all to do, remember with the black screen? I think it was all to do with this ribbon cable, this link cable between here and here. It was either a bad connection here or here. I got a bit, little bit lost track of what I did, but essentially nothing is married to the board. The battery, the screen, the side bit here, these can all be replaced with different Nintendo Switch lights. So the only thing that will be married is certain chips on the actual motherboard itself. So that's useful to know. So I have really, really enjoyed this one. Had to persevere to actually get something working at the end of it. You could say that I was unlucky because there was a USB problem, a smash screen, and also a problem with the motherboard as well. I don't really know if it's unlucky. I think somebody along the line somewhere has been dishonest with this, or maybe a lack of communication between different sellers. But either way, you know, if I had known it had a smash screen and a problem with the USB, no way would I have paid 80 something pound for it. And I don't think anybody else would have either, but still, that's the way it goes. It made for a more interesting video because there was more wrong with it than just bent pins. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. And when something's more challenging, it, you get a bigger achievement when you actually get it working again. So I'm, uh, yeah, well happy with it. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more videos. More importantly than any of this, stay safe and stay healthy. Take care. Bye now.